Okay, welcome back to closing trades. Uh, it's flat for the global markets as well. Uh, uh, some some uh, caution in Europe ahead of the central bank policy, uh, and of course the global markets would be watching out for what the U.S. Fed does as well. Um, by the way, our markets uh, are more in focus right now. Get in Vinay Khattar, head research individual clients at Edelweiss Financial Services, just to get a sense of what's happening um, out there, there in the dealing room as well. Vinay, thanks so much for joining in. Uh, there has been two, three days of a mild correction. I'm using the term mild because right now we are only 42 points down for the Nifty. Uh, what is what is it that happened today? One, and what is it that you're advising clients to do on, on the on falls such as these? So. Uh just in terms of why the markets have been following now, uh, after such a large run-up, you would expect certain degree of consolidation to happen anyway, and that's what you've been seeing for last uh, uh, few days, which is playing out. What has uh, generally uh, surprised us is the very very steep correction which has happened today, and and that's that's been a bit uh, more than what was expected. Excuse me to interrupt okay. you. I will come back to you for this answer, but just need to address Coten Bank numbers. They've just come out. And the PAT is at 663 crores versus, yeah, I think it's 663, if I'm not wrong. Uh, we'll just get the number going versus 390. Yes, uh, our poll suggested uh, 396 uh, standalone, of course. We'll also wait for the console numbers to come out. Console PAT is expected at 668 crores, mind you. So, standalone PAT at 407 crores uh, versus 436 crores. So, standalone PAT is higher. Console PAT is in line with estimates. Now, we'll wait for the NI numbers to come out. We expect the console NI to be around 1466, which would be around a 10% growth. On the bottom line, it, it's pretty much in line with what we were working with. Now, the key remains to figure out what they do on the top line. It's actually bang on in line with what we were working with. 668 was the number. It's 663. So, there has not been a single, I mean, five odd crows on that, on that base. So, it's bang on in line mm -hmm. on the bat front. Now, let's just wait for the NI front as well. That console NIMS are at 497 Percent. I think that's what the number that I'm getting. But I think the console names are at 4.97 percent, and there's a marginal, marginal improvement in asset quality on a quarter and quarter basis. So private banks have been uh, a bit mixed back this time, but Kotak at least has come on in line with estimates. Console pad definitely in line with estimates. Well, I think the net interest income would be important uh, right now on a consolidated basis. The net interest income was expected to be have about 11 percent on a standalone basis. We were looking at the net interest income uh, to come in high of about 7%. Uh, so, you know, some clarity on that front would also help. The interesting part, I think, uh, that would settle in with the market is a slight uh, improvement in net uh, NPAs uh, at 0.88% versus 0.92%. Uh, I, I would reckon that was a quarter on quarter figure that uh, we, we've just spotted. So that would be a little heartening for the market where you're looking at a non-performing asset uh, and the asset quality perhaps improving this time around. Uh, um, we were expecting asset quality to be largely uh, stable, but uh, high provisioning was uh, likely to impact profits, and uh, as has been the case really for a lot of these private banks. Vinay, do you track Kotak or, or the private banking space at large? And uh, in line with numbers is is at least the initial assessment on Kotak bank earnings. Have you looked at it? Uh, I've not looked at Kotak's earnings, which is just being flashed on your screen now. But if I were to just speak of uh, the larger segment of the uh, private sector banks. Most of the numbers have been in line. You are, uh, it appears that we are at the bottom of the uh, asset deterioration cycle. We have already reached the trough, and from this point forward, we don't really uh, expect too much of deterioration in terms of uh, asset quality to happen. Uh, that that now appears to be somewhat under control. Uh, in, in terms of provisioning and provisioning coverage ratios and all that, these are being maintained at the current level. Now, the big pick, the big. Uh, Vector which to to watch here would be if inflation comes down or if you have uh, ten year paper uh, beginning to trade at lower levels, which will then allow uh, some degree of expectation to build up in terms of rate easing and so on and so forth. Now, if that begins to happen, then you will clearly see a, a uptick in the banking cycle probably playing out. But till that particular point in time, the the deterioration is under control and. The vectors will then remain aligned for an uptake if, if inflation uh, comes under control and rates ease off. Consultant basis, uh, the net interest income has come in slightly higher than where we were expecting it. I think 1486, uh, 1484 is the net interest figure. Uh, that's up almost 13% uh, versus our expectation of 11% growth. So they've done well on the top line as well. You can't talk about a whole lot of private banks that have... Uh, 
uh, performed on the top line. I mean, the surprises have been more on the bottom line. But Kotak has done pretty decent uh, compared to other banks in that regard. Uh, do you would you agree with that, uh, Vinay? That's correct. I mean, uh, 13% kind of a uh, top line growth, uh, as well as names of 4.97%, and and no deterioration in asset quality. All these vectors point to point very clearly that Kotak has been doing well. Kotak has anyway. Uh, ha has been a better player within the uh, within the private sector banking space for quite a while now, and that also reflects in the valuation of Kotak. So Kotak uh, uh, richly valued, but is it a good bank doing well? Yes. One of, one of the interesting plays could be on the ICICI bank side, uh, where even after the recent pickup, the valuations are attractive, and and that could uh, clearly be a stock which could uh, give us some some degree of money if it was to be held for long term. Vinay, uh, just la I understand we have to let you go, but but how are you positioning yourself uh, for any kind of trade or investment uh, pre-election? The easier thing would be to do it post-election, but are you are you doing something pre-election? So, uh, Nikunj, if I were to just give you a perspective, we be, we went long almost June July last year, uh, expecting an election trade based on uh, last 20 years of historical data of pre-election rallies. Uh, six months and three months uh, prior to the election. Now, we are well into the fag end of the trade and uh, number of our um, clients are uh, doing uh, profit booking and so on. So, uh, it, it would depend on the kind of uh, client you are. If you are a long-term investment uh, investor and you have long-only portfolio, then it would make sense to hedge your portfolio to a certain extent uh, by buying uh, puts. So, we are advising our clients to buy May series put uh, at 6,500 levels and so on. Or if you are a short-term trader, then it would make sense to uh, book uh, profits, lighten up your portfolio a bit, and uh, wait for the way the results come in. So today's morning's flash of certain strictures which could be passed against Narendra Modi is being uh, spoken about as one uh, probable reason why the markets have corrected. So this clearly indicates that in the run-up to elections, the volatility surely is going to go up uh, as the election results near. And you may you may want to keep that in mind while taking positions. What are the some of what are some of the top option strategies that you are recommending on stocks or indices uh, right now? So uh, one clearly for uh, the, the strategy that we are recommending our clients is uh, to buy uh, six thousand five hundred uh, put options for May series, uh, which are currently trading at about one hundred forty level. Uh, also, you could look at. Uh, uh, buying uh, 6,500 put uh, or, or a 7,000 call. This is a kind of a strategy which could uh, yield money if you see a very strong market move uh, beyond either of the, the, the said range. So these are some of the things that we are advising our clients to do. Okay, just one final word, Vinay, before we let you go. Is there uh, some bit of nervousness about, uh, you know, the U.S. getting into a bit of a correction mode and that just uh, adding to the fall for EMs in India included? So, you know, not this not just being an India-specific issue, but global uh, triggers also putting the pressure on the downside? Uh, that could be uh, that could be a scenario which could play out, which uh, which I I imagine could be. It could happen because of what's happening in in Europe now. This Ukraine uh, situation, if it becomes more volatile, if it erupts with with uh, with iron curtain coming in again between Russia and the in the Western world, and and if this military situation deteriorates uh, further, you could have volatility coming back to certain extent in the Western markets, which could then impact uh, the emerging markets as well. But if that were to remain controlled, then these are just short-term hiccups which would be passed over. And my sense is then these could provide us with very good opportunities to enter into ideas which we have not been able to get into uh, due to the price run-up. Uh, Vinay, we leave it at that. Thanks so much for joining in and giving us uh, that quick perspective on the markets at large. Uh, but 62, or rather 41 points down for the Nifty, 0.62%. The small caps have fallen the most in the session. By the way, just take stock of some of the top losers in the session. Ashwini.